the women in the uh, film, Setsuko Kida, um, she's the one who dreamed about going home. We went down to interview the sailors on the USS Reagan who were uh, exposed trying to help after the earthquake happened. And there was Setsuko. Setsuko uh, had flown over with another Japanese gentleman to speak to the sailors. And it, it was so heartbreaking. She was apologizing to the sailors. I'm trying to gauge the, uh, the baseline knowledge level here. How many people really understand what happened at Fukushima Daiichi? Would like more information. Who would like more? Yes. Well, you had a, a nuclear power plant with six reactors, four of which were they lowered the hill so they could get the reactors closer to the water, cheaper to cool them. Two of them were up higher. When the earthquake hit, the reactors were already in in danger. They were already damaged. And then the tsunami hit and knocked out the backup energy. <coughs> At which point things started to get very hot and it started exploding. And they now have three uh, reactor cores that they can't, they can't tell us where they are. They have melted and left the containment. Probably got into the, the groundwater. The groundwater, yeah. Because Fukushima Daiichi was built in a ravine with an underground river. A uh, disaster for f almost four years now. Every day since that time, uh, billions of becquerels, which is a disintegration per second, have been released into the air and into the ocean. Billions a day. And it comes here. We're downwind of Fukushima. The EPA has a, a system of um, radiation monitors throughout the United States. Um, about one third are operating. How about a little primer on Becquerels, a count per minute? This is a, one of the Geiger counters that Dan is, manufactures, and you hear the clicking. It's registering the disintegration of a nucleus in the vicinity of this pancake reader. Okay, that was the secret of atomic power. You, you, if you could break the nucleus, you release a great deal of energy. And there was a, there's a lot of that going on in the universe without nuclear power. Um, Right now I'm reading 28 counts per minute. That means that there are 28 disintegrations in a minute right here. Um, three years ago I might have been 15. Uh, we took our Geiger counters to San Luis Obispo and there were 50 to 70 in a minute. We have now to understand that there is something between you and me I can't see, but it can hurt me. And with this device, you can tell if it's on this side of the sidewalk or that side of the sidewalk. So th that's the kind of the basics of the count per minute. And it's relative. If I had a bigger pancake, I'd get more counts. I'm also reading in one direction, and nucleuses ex disintegrate in multiple directions. So the <clears throat> body recognizes cesium the same as potassium. So it goes to the soft tissues if you ingest it, if you um, if you drink it or if you eat it, if, if it's in some food. And the strontium is recognized as calcium. And uh, it'll go into the bones or the teeth. And then you can't get rid of it. It stays there, doing its damage, you know, for, for the, as long as you're alive. And then it will, once your body disintegrates, still be wherever that disintegration happened in your grave. Your body is, is absorbing these, and um, they can not only cause cancer, but um, affect your hormones, affect your whole endocrine system. They can affect um, your heart. Your heart, that's right. Heart disease is very common, and, not only, and the thyroid. So the point is then, when you talked about um, calcium, keep your bones right. full of so calcium you, so it right. doesn't attract. Good so point. That's, Thank you. That's, you're welcome. Here, do you want to say something? 
the presentation was made in 2012. This film. This film. They mentioned the mileage away from the plant. So today, what is it? How many kilometers are they saying? I don't know the number, but they've reduced it. They've brought people back. They're oh, it's in. not getting farther. It's getting no. That's closer. right. Even it's though, yeah. even oh. though the government is allowing the people to go back so to closer. Even though they know now better because of measurements, how far and the kids wear those uh, oh. dosimeters. It's called dosimeters, oh. so that they can tell how much radiation they're getting. And instead of evacuating all these kids, which oh. they should have done. And the government also in Japan raised the acceptable level which our government also did preemptively, by That's the right. way. Thank you. So, um, whereas before, uh, I don't know the numbers, but it there was, was a one, low one, level. One, one, one microsievert one. to now 20. Now to 20. Right. Uh, 23. So, so now they're, they used to say, oh, it's one, you're okay. Now they're saying, oh, it's 20, you're okay. Because they just raised it by law. They did the same thing in this mm -hmm. country shortly after Fukushima. Yeah. Could I add one more thing about... Yeah. Okay. There's so much. We could go on here all night. Um, there's also the, the feature of bioaccumulation. Mm -hmm. And that is, even if things are in low concentrations in the area, they can begin to build up um, in certain plants, um, such as algae, seaweeds and whatnot, oh, will like attract fish when they and certain yeah, fish. And then when they, the little ones get eaten by the bigger ones, which yeah. get eaten by the bigger ones, which get eaten by us, and then we pass it on, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, it's insidious in that way in that we have no experience as a species with something you can't see, smell, or taste, or hear that can affect us genetically for thousands of years. Uh, I just want to mention it. real quick before I forget it also, um, of course, e embryos are the most vulnerable. Yeah. And girl children are the most vulnerable after that. They're little, little girls and their eggs, which are in their bodies uh, from the beginning and don't get recreated uh, as, such as sperm, uh, can be affected. And so our genetic stock, I mean, this, the, the people who are um, exposed, the, 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 the little ones now, um, Rosalie Bertel was a biostatistician, and she worked, uh, she just recently died. Uh, she wrote a wonderful book called No Immediate Danger. If you can get that book, it's, it's really worthwhile. And uh, she calculated that by the fifth generation, we will have increasing um, difficulties in, in procreation. And uh, it, it does seem to be happening really quickly have you I mean I, I know so many more people who are having difficulties getting pregnant and holding pregnancies now than when I was younger you want to say yeah um, <clears throat> what astounds me is, is where is the scientific community where are there any you know nuclear scientists or you know people with a conscience who are in, in this who, who are banding together to figure out how to stop Fukushima, or had they just exhausted all uh, ideas, or, you know, or, or are they just in bed with NRC and everybody else? You know? um, we've had Dr. John Goffman. Unfortunately, he died. Rosalie Bertel died. Um, Alice Stewart died. Uh, Carl we, Morgan. We, pardon? Carl Morgan. Uh, Carl Morgan. We, we also have um, um, Arnie Gunderson. We've got the uni Union of Concerned Scientists, right? But they're, they're not very aggressive. I mean, they're but nice, they, but they're... They quit working for GE, right? Because the Mark I reactor, they couldn't work on with good conscience, right? right. I don't know. Can, who are our contemporary... Who's the equivalent of John Goffman now? Yeah. We don't have one. I got to meet Kyoshi Kurokawa in Japan. He was the guy who did the report for the the Diet, and, uh -huh. and he was, you know, he's kind of considered like one of the wise 
people of Japan. And he's willing to speak out. Yeah, and he said, he said this wasn't a natural disaster, this mm -hmm. was a human-caused problem. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. And he said that the roots of it were in the close relationship between the industry and the government. Right. And, and so, and then also the predisposition of the Japanese people not to speak up and um, um, question. But I, I see the same things here. Yeah, yes, and the and biggest. the Japanese people really did get um, go out in the streets, which was phenomenally different, and, and right? And the Japanese scientists, uh, like uh, Professor Koide, Koide, and and a lot of um, scientists and also journalists who went to uh, Chernobyl and studied mm -hmm. uh, those uh, you know effects and the problems they had. So there are people who. Openly They're, talk about it and right, speak, right. and they make public speeches. Yeah, Dr. Yuri Bendichevsky has done some really valuable work. Um, Yab he, Yablikov. And Yablikov. Right? Yeah, that book was uh, translated into Japanese. So yes, yes. Ja Bendichevsky's right. Oh, uh, Yablikov. 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 Okay. Well, the, uh, just a little aside about Yuri Bendichevsky. He was in. Um, he was the head of the Medical Institute of Gomel in Belarus, where most of the Chernobyl um, <coughs> radiation fallout <coughs> happened. And he did uh, tissue samples from the children and found that uh, disease began with 11 becquerels per kilogram of cesium in the body. <coughs> By the time it was 50 becquerels per kilogram of cesium, the disease was permanent and there was organ failure. <coughs> In the United States, we are um, uh, the permissible uh, level of radioactivity in food is 1,200 becquerels per kilogram. <coughs> So just keep that in mind when they say, oh, it's, it's no public health problem because it's below our um, co uh, level of concern. So 1,200 by 11. No, 1,250, <laughs> like yeah. 1, I mean, you know, just keep that it's, in mind. For Especially children. for your children because they're going to be exposed a lot longer. Like tuna is, really a bad thing to, to eat because it's such a huge fish and it swims in the currents and eats a lot of other smaller things and bioaccumulates like <coughs> was, was pointed out. To get back to the scientists, you know, it is, scientists think differently than us. They, they work with concrete facts and they, they don't want to get invested in taking a side. It contaminates their data. Uh, we need to help the scientists go to the next step. Uh, just this argument about a safe level. A lot of scientists will say there is a safe level. And then the PR people come in and say it's even healthy for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been set. Low level. I, I just thought that, that, that an, some kind of international team would be formed. I kept waiting, you know, the international team of scientists that were going to put yeah. their heads together and figure out how to stop this thing. And it's just but, not that. If, if, you, if that was where we were in 2012, yeah. and Senator Ron Wyden in Oregon went to Japan and came back literally uh, trembling and said, we need an international response. And we, we formed with that idea that we were going to help you. Right. Uh, grassroots right. groundswell. Uh, right. But you have to realize that to admit the, the scale of this problem would end the industry. Right. And for nations to cooperate to save our planet, ends war, and war is one of the biggest generators of revenue. There are people who are so invested in this, they are not going to stop. See, that's, but, um, but I, there have been actually international teams going over there um, from different uh, major uh, nuclear firms, and they, uh, I, like they tried to filter the water, that, you know, filter out, the, that's not working. Um, and a couple of weeks ago, the Abe government said, well, we're just going to have to release 
the water from the tanks. You know, they've got this huge number of tanks filled with the really radioactive, the radioactive water is so radioactive in those tanks, you can see, what's that phenomenon called when you can see it? It's um, like the Hertz and Keimer. Oh, that, that, that blue light? Yeah. Really? Yeah, you can see it on the, over the tanks. And that's what they're going to let go into the Pacific. So that's in addition to the billions of becquerels that are flowing in every day. 300 tons of water, radioactive water. But you, you have to understand that there are people who knew that that was inevitable in 2011. Why did we waste three, four years not doing anything correct? Storing it in tanks that are going to rot, they're not going to last 50 years. That series of plants was essentially designed by and sold to the Japanese by American companies and American engineers. Mm -hmm. Who, and, and the real cause of the failure was the fact that all of those air-breathing backup uh, diesel generators were located in a basement underneath of the facility that would clearly fail if it were flooded. And I'm sure that that thought crossed the minds of the engineers who were designing it, but they somehow um, reached the conclusion that, that the risk of that happening was an acceptable risk. Had they instead located those in such a way that it anticipated the possibility of, of the tsunami, which they could have done, and it wouldn't have been a huge um, engineering challenge to do that. It would have just added cost to the yep. project. Um, they elected not to do that. There was a chain of command there that completely neglected this. So I feel like this problem was made in America personally uh, more than it was made. Yeah, we should be the ones apologizing. Yeah, uh, yeah that's exactly right. There'll be some right. of the rotten technology. Well, General Electric goes back to what you said about three of those reactors. General Electric. General Electric built three right. of those reactors. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't factor human error into any plan, then you're leaving out an important item. The thing about it is, with nuclear, human error is a huge disaster, much more so than, you know, the fertilizer plant in Texas or <coughs> spills like you're saying. They're horrible, but they're not as bad as this. This is like much worse, much wi more widely distributed, lasts way longer. That's the thing. It just goes on forever. And You yeah. need a very precise dictionary. There's no such thing as dilution in this case. Right. The material does not dilute. Of course, <laughs> if you put one grain of, uh, one BB in a bucket of water, and you put another one in the swimming pool, yes, it's, there's less chance you're going to bump into that BB. But the BB is still rock solid, and it's still going to hurt you. The other, the other word you got to watch out for is decontamination. Mm -hmm. right, there's there's no, such no such thing. thing. It's called <laughs> transcontamination. Yeah. You trans move it from here to there. <laughs> but it doesn't stop being contaminated. Try to bury it or yeah. it so, But a lot of these words are used, and a lot of people believe them, and it, it, it's used to pretend that we're in, in control. But I think that all of this should, uh, I mean, I'm taking my anger, frustration, and rage and about this incredibly avoidable <laughs> situation and putting it to use, trying to... Uh, shut down our, our own potential Fukushima's here in the California. And uh, it would be great if you all would um, be willing to help with that. And just to spread the information, I think that um, it's really imperative people know that, I mean, that's what the Fukushima is here was such a fabulous, um, fabulous action. And everybody, when you see, see that, Photo, everybody. It's all yeah. May, may I talk about that Fukushima sure. is here? Um, I'm from Japan, and every time I go back to uh, Japan, about here, you want to stand up here so we can. Yes. No, 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 no. Just try. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I get you on. <laughs> um, I I go. My I have uh, my mother and sister's family living in Tokyo, and uh, no one day passed me without thinking. Fukushima, and every day I worried and I'm angry, and um, I never thought that the Japanese government was so bad and so inhumane and cruel. And but Fukushima is here. I attended every time I go back to Japan twice to three times a year. 
I join those groups. I go to demonstration and um, uh, anti-new people. I might have friends, organizers. And I posted Fukushima here, post the picture on the, my Facebook. They were so encouraged. You know, those anti-new people were so, now three years and 11 months, they've been losing kind of hope. Sometimes they get in this hopeless feeling. In fact, about 80% of Japanese population are against nuke. Yes. But they, they don't know what to do because the power is, you know, controlled by banks and this, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. business and the government and bureaucrats. But when people here or overseas show that they care and concerned, really encourage Japanese activists and also Japanese people in general. So uh, when I post the picture, it was actually shared so many people. That's wonderful. Yeah. So I thank you very much, John, and everyone here that uh, to, to show your interest and keep, you know, concerned about Fukushima. And I hope you take care of your own health. Okay. Uh, is also to keep, you know, inform yeah, being informed about Fukushima. I just wanted to um, show my gratitude. Aww. Just, just to say. Yeah, this is an interesting thread. I'd like to go there, but first I want to respond to what Charlie was saying. Why Fukushima is still a problem and will always be a problem for the rest of your lives and your grandchildren's lives. Is it's ongoing <coughs> that that core that molt, molten mass of radioactive material is critical. It's generating more. It's active and it's spewing. Uh, the numbers that are coming out of uh, Japan are phenomenal. If it was the bomb that was dropped, it would be like flushing a toilet. It would spread out a certain amount of bad stuff, um, and then it would dissipate. What we have is a faucet that nobody on the planet knows how to turn on. Three of them. Three. Three of them. Yeah. And we have them all over the United States, and they could pop any day. What we're seeing in Japan, that's a devastated region. Fukushima is a prefecture. It's like a large county or a canton. Uh, there are people that will never go back to their homes, or if they do, they're going to be dressed up and looking at the old pictures that they can't take with them because the pictures are hot. And that is what would happen here in the United States, too. They'd pretend there was nothing wrong, and they would just leave, you know, no one would would be compensated. That's what's happening in, in Japan. Um, and the reason that the, the um, nuclear power plants were pushed on to Japan in the first place, a country who had been bombed twice, and were horrified by the whole technology. You know, they, the CIA went and worked very hard to get to overcome the natural revulsion of the Japanese people. And they put war criminals in charge of the project to sell it to the, um, to the Japanese people through cartoon characters and propaganda. And th so even though there was great reluctance and, and resistance, they pushed those um, reactors into Japan. Japan is roughly the size of California and has 54 reactors in it, plus reprocessing plants. Mm. And do you know why the US wanted them so badly there in Japan? Does anybody know? It was because the U.S. knew that then the J Japanese would have the wherewithal to make nuclear weapons. And J Japan sits the back door of Russia and of China. And that was very convenient for the U.S. back then, as well as now. And that is why the United States has urged the Abe administration to restart those nuclear reactors. You made reference uh, at the beginning of these three unaccounted for molten uh, reactor cores. Uh, back in the early days of uh, anti-nuclear activism, the China Syndrome was held yeah. up as the big scary event, right? right? And there was a movie about it, and it almost happened, but it didn't quite. Right there, you've got three co-located, ongoing events 
that Child. are in progress, they're all could be described as China syndrome type events. Just by chance, it hasn't resulted in, I mean, it requires a certain coalescing, of, you know, there has to be critical mass that's maintained, but it can move, if there is any critical mass, it can move incredible places and do amazing things. These are like totally unknown, uncontrollable threats that no yeah. human engineering effort could probably do anything about, even if we wanted to. They're That's out true. of control. Well, I mean, and that should be front page news every day. We're, who knows about it? <laughs> you That's, know? Right. That's right. Fukushima response got started in Occupy. And my favorite Occupy banner was Occupy the Mystery. Mm -hmm. We are out of the box. Yeah, yeah. This thing yeah, has sure. changed the game. There's a lot of people who are locked in, you know, making a lot of money, a lot of people who are half asleep. Uh, but it's different now. And I think that's almost, for me, that's what's hopeful. Because it's, forced, it, it's telling me that there's no more magic ring I should have to fight for or scramble for. It's just kindness to other people. You know, it's, it's enjoying the miracle that we're in. And the miracle is bigger than us. And we may be able to access other levels of it, Maybe this is going to force us to another level. Uh, it's going to be a different planet in uh, 200 years, that's for sure. That's right. You no longer have to ask people about something that could possibly happen in the future. You, all you have to do is educate them about the reality of, of what has already happened and is already there. And <laughs> it, it's, it, That part of it's a done deal. It's more than just a, an imminent danger. It's reality. Look, at Diablo, that's in a tsunami zone. Yes. Mm -hmm. and that's a in a tsunami zone. And no it ha it's an intersection of 13 earthquake faults, 13 four earthquake. major, no. yeah, four if you, if you, major. If you look it's almost it up. as if they hit the spot, <laughs> right, right, you know, right. like, <laughs> let's have this total destruction. <laughs> so the all the there, there is a joke about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's an ex a nuclear <laughs> reactor is <laughs> an expensive <laughs> way to <laughs> find earthquake yeah. faults. Right. But what did our government do? <laughs> uh, they right. sent a think tank over that twisted arms in the back rooms and had a press conference saying it's too important for our security for Japan to abandon nuclear power. And you should know that because our permissible level is 1,200, and in Japan it's only 100, we could be getting food from Japan that is too contaminated to be sold there, but it's not too contaminated to be sold in the United States. And there's a lot of things in processed foods where you get products from Japan. So that, that was the first thing our government did. And then the second thing was to raise our limits, shut down our radiation monitors, and to um, hire PR firms to make sure that everybody didn't, that everybody went back to sleep and that no one knew the reality of it. But despite all of that, the industry is in trouble because natural gas is much cheaper. Renewables are so cheap now. So because of the economics, um, and if there is enough public will against them, like it, what happened with uh, San Onofre, and then you challenge the insanity in courts, that can create a perfect storm so that we can take the, these down and, and shut them. Mm. Well, I think we're pretty close to wrapped up here. Thank you so much for everybody for coming and being willing to talk about this. <laughs> what was inspiring to see the hole in the head? That was just a few people yeah. who said no, yeah. you know, yeah. and right. stood up. And, and they, they used creativity, and yeah. anger. And, yeah, and yeah. We're, yeah. We're, we're, doing it. we're doing it in California right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>